नमस्कार वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ एडिटोरियल यू सी दी अटॉर्नी जनरल ऑफ इंडिया मिस्टर आर वेंकट रमानी ही सेस वाई शुड पीपुल नो वेर द पोलिटिकल पार्टीज आर गेटिंग देअर फंडिंग वाई शुड पीपुल नो सो पीपल नीड नॉट नो this he spoke to the supreme court he told the supreme court while discussing electoral bonds and i am going to discuss electoral bonds with you today let's get right into the show now while i have done a complete editorial on electoral bonds i think way back in 2019 i am going to give you a brush up electoral bonds are very simple electoral bonds are available in uh, state bank of india i think 29 specified state bank of india centers which includes uh, new delhi gandhi nagar chandigarh bangalore bhopal mumbai jaipur lucknow chennai kolkata and guwahati you can go to these places in uh, uh, state bank of india on the uh, first 10 days uh, during january april july and october Specified months are very, very, very specific. specific. So first ten days of January, April, July, October, you you can can go and you can purchase uh, bonds. Uh, the government can also decide थर्टी days uh, in the Lok Sabha year, which means next year the government can give one full month and you can go and purchase any day. So any uh, citizen, any corporate uh, can go and purchase uh, electoral bonds. so uh, the corporate can go pay 1000 rupees and buy bond 10000 rupees buy bond 1 lakh rupees buy bond 1 crore rupees buy bond and they can buy whatever they want okay so they can pay 10 crore rupees and buy bonds theek hai na if they have a kyc verified account and with that account they can they can purchase the bonds and this bonds now everything is secret this bond they can secretly go and give it to any political party they want nobody comes to know and the political party can take the money happily they can take the money this was introduced by uh, mr narendra modi uh, this was introduced way back in 2018 by mr narendra modi under the finance bill 2017 and uh, mr narendra modi government then said that listen you know what i transparency kar raha hai baba balance sheet mein paisa aa raha hai na we have to show no in the balance sheet the money comes in but balance sheet mein the money is shown electoral bond money is shown but who gave the money that is a big question mark nobody knows theek hai na so you collect the money now a petitioner obviously went and uh, filed a suit in supreme court he filed a suit saying that hello are when you mr government wants to know every penny where we get every penny every penny we have to disclose to the government this we got from here this we got from here this we got from here this we made from here you have to disclose to the government but when it comes to political parties you can take money from anybody and nobody needs to know nobody needs to know this is what uh, the 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 petitioner went and said to which the attorney general told him he said firstly there can be no general right to know anything and everything without being subjected to reasonable restrictions secondly the right to know as necessary for expression can be specific ends or purpose and not otherwise this is what the attorney general said i will repeat this for your benefit because i want to equate this to something else he said firstly there can be no general right to know anything and everything without being subjected to a reasonable restriction what the attorney general is saying is that are kyu why should you know everything who are you to know everything why should you know everything everything you want to know just because you are a citizen of this country and you are a voter why should you know it there has to be certain restrictions baba you should be restricted to you know we will only should tell you what we want to tell you this is what the what i think he is saying secondly he said that the right to know as necessary for expression can be for specific ends or purposes and not otherwise if you want to know why do you want to know kyu mangta hai tumko ye sab koi end hai koi specific need hai do you there is a specific need for this then why do you want to know acha i asked the same question to the government why do you want to know every penny that a individual a citizen earns in this country are uh, does the government has any restrictions 
forget the uh, money earning the government wants to know everything through your aadhar card through in linking your aadhar card to your bank card to your pan card to your that card and to this card almost everything who you call who you talk to who you who you interact with who you do business with the government wants to know is there any restrictions government there is no restrictions political party baba why do you want to know i never understood this concept and i thought this was one of the most ridiculous statements i have ever heard you see let me try and explain to you what is the problem you see first and foremost is this is a this is off the topic question but i am worried i am surprised is the attorney general of india functioning for the people of india or for political parties who does he actually represent does he represent the welfare of indians me or does he represent the welfare of a political party i am very surprised that's the first question khair theek hai side mein rakhte hai question ko you see my first question is uh, who does the businessman invest in i'll tell you why i am asking you this question i am asking you this question is because the political party mr narendra modi's government at that point in time had said that baba listen you know we want to maintain secrecy so that any person any corporate any people can give any money to any political party they wish baba democracy full fledged democracy to koi dar nahi i don't have to disclose that i am giving it to congress or i am giving it to bjp or i am giving it to cpim or i am giving it to aap i don't have to disclose so i can give it to any party and that is why the secrecy should be maintained otherwise the secrecy is not maintained then kal bolna nahi ke bjp ne tumhare pe ed raid karwaya don't don't tell us that that is what bjp said theek hai okay there is a validity to what he said but let me ask you a question you are a businessman who do you think you are going to put your money on who do you think you are going to donate your money to will you donate a money will you donate your money to a party that you know is never going to come or is may not come in this government may not form the government may not win the elections or are you going to put all your funds to a party that you are sure of will be forming the government because corporates who pay money most of them let us be real and this is my opinion so that you know i can tell you frankly most of the businessmen who puts in money who gives donation is not for the benefit of india or you know thinking of india and 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 trying to act for the democracy and all all that doesn't happen they give that money so that their business can run smoothly so that when the government who, which comes into power takes care of them when they need to so my question again is who do you think a, a, a corporate a company a businessman will give money to a party that is going to 100% form the government or that has got more chances of forming the government that is more likely to form a government or a party that the who who may not form the government whose chances of forming the government are 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 not very sure the answer is they will he will give the money to a party that is going to form the government so who does this entire concept of the secrecy actually help think about it that's my question number 1 let's talk about the second problem the second problem is one businessman one businessman give tens and thousands of crores to a political party tens and thousands of crores because he can give whatever money there is no restriction he can give whatever money he wants to that political party and it will be all a secret tens and thousands of crores to that political party what do you think will be the clout of that one man over that political party now that one man over that political party if he has that kind of clout can you imagine who actually will be then running the country that one political that political party which is formed the government or that one man who has funded and funded so much for that political party so wouldn't that be wouldn't isn't there a possibility isn't there a possibility that we could be actually having a proxy prime minister or a proxy leader that businessman that corporate head on cho that corporate boss who is actually controlling the government of this country isn't there a possibility isn't that a very simple logic are paise denge to uska fayda bhi utha ke lenge na A corporate gives money; it, they will also take benefit out of it, isn't it? 
they will not just give money like i told you to the best of my understanding no corporate gives money for the democracy and for the country and for being patriotic and all that corporate gives money is because finally they will expect something in return in the future once the government which they gave money comes into power this is a normal fact and i don't have to tell this to anybody everybody in this country knows it so mind you we are opening ourselves to crony capitalism to have a proxy company stroke person running this government and or 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 having tremendous influence over our government which technically means your life and mine would be run by a businessman sitting somewhere while we are voting for our political parties going with the flag on the streets standing in queue voting for that political party our actual life will could be could be run by a businessman sitting somewhere this is a probability why are we not seeing this why are the courts not seeing this and when are we going to see all of this this is the point i wanted to make this is my topic number 1 i have a short topic to discuss with you before i end uh, my uh, editorial let me see if i missed out something uh, no i haven't so let me end my topic with a end my editorial with a short topic um and that is the supreme court had made a statement a few days back which said and i had i had actually come in front of you and made and and uh, did an editorial on this they had made a statement that no money has come to manish sisodia how will you bring him under the money laundering act supreme court had asked ed uh, in delhi liquor policy supreme court had asked same supreme court had said that uh, but you say that policy decisions are motivated for personal benefits so will that mean that you are challenging the policy decisions matlab if this policy decision was made for personal benefit was that policy decision wrong is what the supreme court had asked the attorney general at that point in time they had said that how do you say that the kickback was given that's entirely on the basis of an approval statement this is what the court had said as per your case no money has come to money sisodia so how did the money flow from liquor group you have taken two figures 100 crores and 30 crores who paid him this there can be so many people paying money not necessarily connected to liquor where is the proof the court had asked all this the court had asked this was regarding the manish sisodia case today manish sisodia was up for bail the court says no bail no bail but the court says aisa hai na but jaldi jaldi ye case karo but no bail manish sisodia goes back into the jail now what i don't understand is if the court is 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 not very sure about what they are being presented just a few days back when the court makes a statement like this and a few days after when it comes uh, when the case come up for hearing uh, bail hearing the court doesn't sanction bail what are all those statements all about then what are all those statements all about these were scathing statements there is not a shred of evidence is what the court had said against manish sisodia but again today he had not been given the bail why i don't understand this logic you see i also don't understand the logic where the court has now given the speaker of maharashtra time till december 31st 2023 the supreme court says okay you know when this case started may may the case started may supreme court gave a reasonable time may june july august september october november december now december supreme court says december 31st tak to karo yaar now look at how convenient december 31st january february march april may comes general elections normally april may could be general elections normally so then by the time he takes the decision by the time the decision is implemented or by the time the decision is challenged for supposing he takes the decision of not disqualifying the the mlas uddhav thakre by the time he goes to the court to the supreme court challenging that decision 3 mahina ho gaya which means the decision whatever it is has no veracity then does it isn't the doesn't the court know this are you getting what i am saying i am saying that is the decision 
supposing is taken on the 31st of December, that okay, we are not going to disqualify uh, these 14 MLAs, including the Chief Minister. The decision is taken thus. What happens then? The option in front of Uddhav Thakre is to go to Supreme Court and challenge it. He goes to Supreme Court and challenges it. He's got three months before the Lok Sabha elections. By the time it comes up for hearing and by the time the Supreme Court hears, as we are seeing it, oh okay, yeah, election katam sab katam. Then what does what is this entire court case actually valued? What is the value of this court case? Where is justice? And how is justice being done? You know, I want to conclude my today's editorial by asking these questions. One can see that there are flaws in electoral bonds, yet we are sitting and discussing it. One can see that Bilkis Banu, the people who raped her, the people who killed her family has been set free. But yet we are discussing about it. We can see that this decision has been pushed. The decision of Maharashtra Assembly has been pushed, pushed, pushed because they do not want to take that decision. We see that, but yet we find our justice system so helpless. My question is, is justice only for common man like us? Because we dare, we dare miss one hour of a court date or a, of a court summons, one hour and we'll be thrown behind bars. And the system literally is playing around with the justice system. I don't know whether I'm in contempt of court because I said this. But I'm saying this because I'm genuinely, I genuinely feel that this is what's happening. And as a citizen, it pains me. Because in a country, if the justice system fails, na, then there is nothing left. Then there is nothing left in that society. That's my problem. And that's why I wanted to do today's editorial. Till I see you next time. That's uh, tomorrow at 10 p.m. Namaskar.